Hey guys, today we're gonna see a very simple and yet super efficient build order for ZVT and I'll be talking about a Roach Pressure which is very commonly used on all levels and by all Zero players. So this is a very good attack that can basically end the game just like this or it can be a really good transition into the macro game, into the mid game where you have a very decent advantage and you can just easily close it off with any other type of army composition or any other type of attack that's already up to you so this is a very simple build and in the beginning you just go uh, with a normal expansion you take your second base and then you just do what you're supposed to do in a normal game so you take the gas you make the pull and you just react to what your opponent does so far there's just nothing really going on and we're just macroing as normal and this is the best part about this build order because you kind of play like you're supposed to play and your return opponent is probably not gonna see that coming unless he goes for a very deep scouting so for example he goes to scout the rouge warren somewhere in the background of your base uh, but that doesn't really happen that often because by the time the reaper is gonna be trying to do the scouting you already gonna have the link speed as it is and it's gonna be kind of difficult to do so the most important part about this build order is that it's uh, not pre-planned in a normal game, so you can't really plan to execute this build order, it's just more like a reaction type of thing, you know? So, for example, here you have to pull drones from the gas, and you have to mine minerals and just play normally, because again, this build order works not exactly in all the situations, uh, but it's also very universal, so you can kind of try play it in almost all games, but still I'm gonna add a bit more details to that explanation a bit later on. So, the best case scenario for this build order is when you see the third base. And your goal would be, your first overlord, it flies all across the map, all the way across the map, and then you just place it somewhere here, around the corner, around the corner of the main base, and then you just fly to see what's going on. And usually you're gonna see uh, 111, that's so-called build order where they have one barrack, one factory and one starport and this is kind of fine if you play this build order against this thing but it's much better if you play that against the early third cc and i can see it here i checked that this is the cc and now i'm pretty sure i can execute that because again when turn players play this kind of stuff they are usually very vulnerable and they're not gonna aim they're not gonna have a lot of stuff when the attack hits them uh, may, they might have like a Banshee or a Liberator or a couple of Hellions and in my case it's gonna be a couple more Marines than usual but that's still fine and there is only one case when this build order is not gonna work and that's gonna be either Mass Cyclones which is kinda tough to deal with but you can still try but I do not recommend that or if they, they are going for Siege Tanks for some reason but again most of players unless maybe in some leagues like Gold League or maybe like Civil League, where when players like feel a bit, you know, scary of uh, upcoming attacks, they might go for siege tanks just for no reason, just to feel safe, to feel comfortable and cozy on the base. I uh, usually it doesn't happen, so you are safe to assume that probably it's going to be a very successful thing unless your opponent is super passive and he likes to turtle a lot. But it's not the case in most scenarios. So let's see what we are going to do next. So I scout that and. Now you need around 33 workers, that's the perfect number with this amount of workers, maybe like 36, but usually it's somewhere in between, between 33 and 36, depending on how you trade it in the beginning. So for example, in this game, I believe I haven't lost a single worker, yet it's true. And you can just go uh, with this number, and when you hit this number of workers, it's gonna happen around 330 or 325, you put down the Roach Warren, and you also... Uh, pull your drones back to the gas and you also add the second extractor, extractor all at the same time. You try to spread creep but you don't really go out of the map too much, you just you know, trying to uh, see what's going on, trying to give like a small boost to your army when it's gonna be coming with the creep, it's gonna give like a small speed buff and it's pretty good. And then you just stop and the only thing you're gonna do now is make injections and you're gonna build like six, seven, eight roaches depending on how much larva you have. Your goal is gonna be at least six or seven, it's fine. And make sure to make additional overlords before you do that. So you can see I make five, it's not really good. I should have like at least six or seven, probably gonna add a bit. And then after you have this Roach number, you're just gonna be building 
pure links after that you don't build you don't build really any more roaches because again they are kind of slow and you won't have them by your opponent's base they're not gonna help you reinforce the attack so you just keep on making links and it's also pretty good if you can try to force your opponent to stay at home so in this case my opponent Mixu is a very good zerg player from Finland but he's off racing in this case in this game he's actually going for marines and he's gonna be playing like a solid macro game at least he plans to but Unfortunately, it's not going to happen, but anyway, usually Terran players are going to be trying to take map control, they're going to be trying to harass you with Hellions, they might build a Banshee or a Liberator, and the problem is you should try to not get scouted too early. So ideally, you'll get scouted somewhere in the middle of the map when your opponent sees your Roaches, or the perfect scenario is when you just, you know, attack the base and that's the moment your opponent tries to react and counter that, but it's usually too late. Uh, however, you need to make sure that your opponent's Helens don't see you, like here, or they see the Roach Warren, which is even worse. So you need to try to use your links at his side of the map and maybe try to bait his attention to make him stay at home like I did here and, you know, just try to be a bit more passive. Do not go out on the map as far as I would not like that to happen, right? So, and then you just make links, and that's very easy. And as you can see here, my economy is just 57 drones. Could be 56, it's okay. And I have three bases. You need the third base for one reason. First reason is because if you don't have the third base, your opponent is going to assume that you are doing something cheeky, cheesy, and hence he's going to be more prepared. And in this case, you can see my opponent feels like he's playing a micro game, while in reality, he's actually uh, being cheesed by me, right? And also the second reason is that you're going to need a lot of larva, you need those stuff to reinforce with links, and on two bases it's not going to be enough. So this is how your base looks, and from this point on you can actually transition. For example, if you get scouted really early, for example you get scouted here, and you know your opponent sees your roaches, you can just keep on making drones after that, maybe make like three to four roaches just to bait him, and then you just defend at home. In case if you see that there is a starport, and it's going to be around the timing you scout for the third base around 2.40 or minute 3, you can also put down one spore clover at each base. <clears throat> so it's very easy to do, right? You put one here, you put one here, and you can actually put one here, but that's not really necessary. And that's also good for liberators, because again, you never know uh, when his aircraft is going to hit you. He might stay at home with the bench if he sees something is wrong, but you can actually be across the map and need to make sure that you don't lose your economy. So now let's get to the point where we actually attack and we kind of need a couple of Ravagers. The perfect number is three uh, because three Ravagers, they kill a Liberator with three shots and they also get a tank with three shots. So you don't really need more. Uh, and probably you're also not going to have enough gas for more, so that's fine. And you should try to morph Ravagers somewhere in the beginning of your attack, because Ravagers, they have a slightly higher uh, move speed than Roaches, and you can see that they're, you know, trying to overtake this poor Roach, and, you know, it makes sense to morph them somewhere here, so that they can catch up with the rest of the army, and now, after the latest patch, it also takes a bit more time for them to morph, so probably should do that at home. And then the attack hits, your goal is very simple. You should try to tank with your Roaches if you face Hellions. So for example here I don't have two Hellions, but normally you might see like four, six or even eight or even ten Hellions. And in this case you need to make sure that your Roaches are standing in front and you are not losing your links. And if for example there were more Hellions, I will be trying to use my links to go uh, for the main base or to go for the workers, but never directly engage with the Hellions, because that's very, very bad. And in case if he manages to get all of your links uh, killed, then it's going to be a big problem, because it will be very easy to target other Roaches and Ravagers. And that's uh, the goal. So, you can see here, I try to fight. I try to make sure that I'm not uh, waiting too much time. I, sh you know, I shouldn't be giving him time to build the bunker. So, And I see the number of Marines. And again, you don't need to engage immediately. You can just try to poke him to force him to move his SCVs uh, at the front gates. And you can try to kite with your Roaches. Uh, and then I will be just waiting for um, the reinforcements. And I will be waiting for my links to come here. And you can see I have 18 links in production. And there are actually quite a lot of links on the map. They're streaming from my bases to his base. And I kind of need to have at least... Uh, 10 or better 20 to start this attack 
Uh, if there were no Marines on the Hellions, then I could have tried to attack with this number, and actually that's something that I'm also doing here, you can see. I'm trying to kite, I'm trying to buy time, I'm trying to force him to react, and it works really fine. In this case, I'm taking a very poor engagement, actually, you should never try to fight without links, because links, they serve as a buffer, and they also do quite a lot of DPS damage, actually. Yeah, right, sorry, not the DPS damage, is the same thing, they do a lot of DPS, so they do a lot of damage, right? And in this case, roaches are kind of unprotected, and uh, it's not the best case scenario for me to fight because, again, I know that there's nothing gonna, nothing's gonna come up. He's probably not gonna have uh, more marines, something crazy like a steam pack, or he already has that, right? So it's a bit better to just step back and wait for a better situation. Here I lose quite a bit of roaches, but again, uh, thankfully, my links arrive just in time, and now I have a lot of buffer. I have like this. Um, mid shield that takes the damage and I just need to make sure that I don't lose more roaches because again if you lose all, all of the roaches you're probably gonna lose this uh, or you'll have to transition so make sure that you save at least four or five you can lose all the roaches but you need to make sure that ravages are not being targeted and then you should just be focusing on uh, first first thing is that you should make sure that he doesn't build bunkers so you should target this SCV and you also need to focus down the siege tanks, liberators, and matches with the ravagers. And one thing that I did wrong here in this game, you also also need an overlord somewhere here, because there could be a moment for, in time, for example, when this guy, let's say he was gonna build a siege tank, he can place the siege tank here, and you can't really shoot that because he's gonna be in the fog of war, and you need an overlord to, you know, to see the high ground. And that's why you always need to bring it to this point or somewhere close. I had one around this pathway. It was on the, on, was standing somewhere here. I don't quite remember. But it got killed by five marines, which I didn't really, really expect. Because, you know, normally people don't build so many marines at this timing. They usually have like six helens or so. So I lost that. And this was a big mistake. And that could have ruined this attack. But thankfully... Uh, my opponent wasn't going for a siege tank. So, and then you just uh, try to proceed, you try to finish the game if possible. Uh, that's usually like a very good uh, thing to do. So, for example, here I'm trying to do that. And you should just target down the bunker and uh, get his economy. And this is what happened in this game. You can see that my links are still coming and I just go to the main base. Uh, also, like a very good thing to do, for example, um, in some cases, turn players will try to evacuate this base because again sometimes they see for example the attack too late they see it uh, at the gates of their base and they'll realize okay we are not gonna hold that we need to go back at home and in this case it's very important to try to sneak in into the production uh, get the supply depots you can destroy them with the biles and ro roaches and then you should just stay at the production facilities because he won't be able to produce any units and there's pretty much going to be over. Um, this happens often when your opponent is going to have Hellions, so for example he can have six Hellions in one Banshee, and he knows that he cannot really hold that, but he can buy enough time for him to actually win the game, to use the second Banshee that's going to come up, and just, you know, bite by bite, he's going to be chipping away at your army, and it's going to be a problem. So you kind of need to send a production and destroy all of these facilities, uh, but you, again, should be very, very uh, careful with uh, his Hellions, because again, it's a pretty big deal, and um, with Hellions you should be always uh, micro with Roaches, but that's pretty much it. Actually, at this point, I win this game. It was kinda obvious. Uh, but in some cases, for example, you cannot really break your opponent. So, if this guy actually went for a siege tank, and let's say he decided to fight me here, but then he was kind of losing the fight, he lost some SCVs, and let's say he decided to evacuate, right? We can actually see that moment in time. So let's say we took a fight here, but for example, for some reason I didn't have enough links and I just cannot break him, but he already lost like a couple of SCVs. What you're gonna do next is that you can see that already at this point, I'm not quite sure if actually I'm breaking him or not. I know that I destroyed a couple of SCVs and I feel kind of confident that I can actually uh, maintain, maintain the late game because again, I have like a decent creep spread, I have free bases and that's uh, that was also a very good engagement for me, right, I kill 16 SCVs. So, at that point, what you can do, you can just start transitioning, and the best way to play that would be making around 60 drones afterwards, and extra two gases. You don't really need six gases as Zerg, unless you play Hydras, or unless you play Mutus. So, in this case, I would suggest you only build two gases, and you have, like, full free mineral lines, the fourth base, four gases, one uh, 
Bailing Nest and two Evolution Chambers. You can just play Bailings and Links and uh, wait for his attack because what's gonna happen next? Usually, if your attack fails, what's gonna be an immediate response from your opponent? He's just gonna get two Medivacs and he's gonna get 16 Marines and he's gonna be uh, really annoying with this uh, stack of units. He's gonna be dropping you, he's gonna be trying to clear creep. Get the overlords, maybe get some of your economy, and you need to be ready to counter that. And usually, in most cases, Thanos would be trying to go for this counter aggression immediately, and that's something um, that you need to think about in advance, right? And this is why usually you don't really go for Hydras, you don't really go for Mutas in this case, because again, uh, your economy, you need you need more money, you need more workers, and already your opponent has all the tools needed to be present on the map to be aggressive and that's why you probably should skip hydras and skip mutas at least for a while and if you counter his first attack you can safely expand next you can add some drones to the fourth base and you can also add the gases and just play a normal macro game like everybody plays that's pretty much it i will leave a description of this build order in the description section of youtube and that's it for today guys if you enjoyed that leave a like and subscribe for more guides and Check out other stuff that I have on this channel. Have a nice day and see you next time.